Hey everyone, welcome to the Writing Podcast. I'm your host Adam, and I'm joined by my co-host today, Lindsay Baroker. And uh, first off, we want to thank everyone for tuning in. You know, whether you're watching it live or a hundred years from now, and whatever iTunes evolves into. Uh, thanks for watching or listening, I guess, if that's the case. Um, so for today's show, being the first show, we're going to talk about a few things. Um, first, we'll tell you a little bit about ourselves and our self-publishing journey so far. We won't go too much into it. I'm sure if you've seen us on other stuff or read our, our site or anything, you already know, so we don't want to uh, you know, pound it into your brain or anything. But uh, we'll talk a little bit about it, and uh, you'll find out more about us, I'm sure, as the show goes forward. So uh, we're also going to talk about podcast itself and kind of what to expect on it and what we'll be doing on it in the upcoming episodes. And then after that, uh, with whatever time we have left, we should have a good bit of time. We're actually going to talk a little bit about box sets uh, because Lindsay and I are both in separate box sets at the moment, uh, priced differently and doing different things with them. So we're going to talk a little bit about that. So, um, Lindsay, did you want to say hi? Hey, guys. Uh, here I am on my third or fourth podcast. I'm hoping this one will actually stick around for a while and uh, that you'll uh, get some good information from us. Yeah, I was, I was thinking about that earlier, too, before we started, that you're kind of like... Um, maybe like how David was there for a while, like a year ago, where he was showing up on like every podcast. So, um, but yeah, I, I think that's a little stick. So, as anyone watching live uh, or on YouTube sees, my office is quite decorated in Christmas stuff. We had to bring everything in here because my wife's cats were terrorizing it in an unshut room. So, um, if you're wondering, I don't usually put a Christmas tree up in the office, but there it is. Um, all right. So, Lindsay. Uh, if you want to tell everyone a little bit about yourself, and like I said, we don't have to go in super detail, just kind of, you know, how long you've been self-publishing, how much is out, and all that good stuff. Sure thing. And uh, if, if you were me, that Christmas tree would still be there in July, so uh, I'll, be watching, I'll be watching for that, because I have this candle wreath thing on my table that has just become an all-year-round decoration now, because I'm too lazy to do decorations and change them, but uh, yeah, self-publishing <laughs> stuff. Um, I am about on my four-year anniversary here. Started in December of 2010, published my first novel, The Emperor's Edge, which is a fantasy novel, and it's uh, perma-free now. And gosh, I didn't come into this having a whole trunk full of novels, but now I've published at least 15, a bunch of novellas and short stories, and a couple months ago I started a pen name in a different genre and published three novels and I'm about to publish the fourth one of those. So I, I feel like I have a lot of stuff I can talk about over the series here, whatever we're going to, however long we go on with this show. Uh, of course, we are planning to have other guests on that are more interesting than we are. But uh, I've been uh, making a living doing this for about one year in. I was actually able to make this sort of the full-time job. I was self-employed, so it wasn't a huge, uh, like I had to go tell a boss and quit and, and save up a whole bunch of money ahead of time. I figured... You know, I just kind of shift away from what I was doing, which was professional blogging, uh, into writing fiction, which is just way more fun than writing about, like, how to install swimming pools. And uh, I was doing home improvement stuff because it actually made pretty good money with advertising and stuff, but it wasn't my passion. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I'm doing this full-time now, and uh, I've seen a lot of things. Four years doesn't sound like very much, especially when you talk to somebody like Dean Wesley Smith or, or those guys that have been in the publishing industry for decades. But I feel like so much has changed as far, especially as far as like what works with marketing. Uh, you know, it's something different every month on Amazon, it seems. So, it, and I, I find it interesting. It's always fun to kind of watch and explore and, and see what's going on. Even if I'm not always the best marketer myself, I, I find it interesting to, to follow that stuff. So you said you were doing nonfiction like guides and stuff. Um, so, you, so if you were still doing that, if you had never picked up fiction, would you be one of those guys now? Well, girls, I guess. I'd be putting out like 200 instructional pamphlets on KU. <laughs> That's funny because uh, I probably would have been like, what is that? Is it Steve Scott, the guy that does all the, uh, <laughs> he's got, makes like 60000 a month doing habit-forming yeah. books and self-help. Although, yeah, I might have given that a try, but um, I always did love writing fiction. I have stories, you know, in my parents' house on notebook paper from like when I was six, writing knockoffs of the Black Stallion. So it was always a passion for sure, and you know, I think it was probably around 2009, I, I quit playing uh, World of Warcraft, <laughs> which was taking up way too much time. Before that, it was EverQuest, before that, text games. So I was a big geek 
spending way too much time playing online computer games. And I, I quit that, and I, I, strangely enough, that same year I finished my first novel. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> I joined an online writing workshop with the thought of really getting serious about trying to get published. And I really got serious right away, I would say, and really started thinking, wow, I'd love to do this for a living. But the traditional publishing route is so slow that I was fortunate that you know the Kindle had come out at that point. And I think in fall of 2010, I found J.A. Conrad's blog. And like within a week, I decided, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm all in. I'm self-publishing. Forget that agent hunting stuff. <laughs> so yeah, I, I jumped into it pretty quickly. And it's funny that you were talking about how you've been doing it four years, and it's kind of weird saying that um, compared to those other people. But four years now, like if you think about it in the self-publishing Kindle type landscape, it's almost like you're a veteran. You're like the old school publishers, right? Um, a lot of people like now I notice are saying things. I made a blog post recently about it. Um, you know, is it too late to start? You know, this has been going for four or five years. Surely it's too late. So it's kind of funny to hear that. Well, it's funny, when I got started, I was thinking, because Amanda Hawking had already made her, her millions and gotten her big deal, and I was like, is it too late to start now? This is, a, like I said, December 2010. I was like, wow, I'm going to do it anyway, but I, I feel like I'd missed the, the wave, you know, like, oh, the 99 cent thing was over. That, that wasn't like an instant way to sell books anymore. And so part of the, one of the reasons I started the pen name project or I, I should say one of the reasons I kept it secret is that I wanted to kind of see how it is starting now as a new author and, and what you kind of have to do to get a jump and gain some traction. And, you know, maybe we'll talk about it in a future show, but I actually did make like $3,000 in the first month of publishing with the pen name, even without telling anybody about it. So I, I did start with two books so and made one permit free. That was a big part of it. But, uh, yeah, it's definitely still possible, so don't be discouraged. You can You can do it today. Yeah, that's something I definitely want to talk about um, on the next show, and I'll let everyone know kind of what we have planned for the next show after um, we talk about ourselves a little bit more, I guess. But I read that whole blog post that you did also, and um, it, it was really interesting that you started from scratch and got to that number in the first month. I mean, you were, well, I keep almost going going further into it, but, I mean, you planned it. You had multiple things uh, written before you went out, which, which was a smart thing to do, and we'll talk about that some more, like you said. Um one thing though, I'll, I'll say really quick is that I know you started from scratch, but I read I was reading the comments to you, and some people were like, "Oh, Amazon gave you a bump because they know you." That was hilarious. There's at least a couple of conspiracy theorists that come and say stuff like that on my blog, and I'm like, Amazon does not care who I am. Um, maybe if you're like H M Ward or somebody that really sells just tons and tons of books and has like an Amazon rep and all that kind of thing, maybe. But no. Uh, it wasn't anything like that. I'm not that important in the grand scheme of things for Amazon. You didn't, you didn't get to go to the Bezos campfire this year or anything? <laughs> See, I didn't even know about that. I'm, I'm not one of the cool kids. <laughs> <laughs> well, I definitely wasn't there right there, so that's okay. okay. Um, all right, so I guess I'll say a little bit about me also. I always hate doing it, but um, then you can ask me some stuff if you want. But... Um, so as far as self-publishing goes, uh, I was always writing stuff too, like you said. Um, even when I was a kid, I wrote a lot of short stories and things like that, um, but didn't really think too much about it. And then uh, sort of around the t same time, late 2010, early 2011, uh, I read a blog post or a news post or something about Amanda Hawking, and that's when it kind of clicked uh, that you didn't need to go traditionally anymore to make decent money. I uh, see decent, she was making like millions of dollars, so I guess that qualifies as pretty decent. Um, but anyway, my wife had already started writing a book, and uh, we were kind of co-writing it. I was working a lot at the time, so I would kind of edit as she went and rewrite some of the scenes. And uh, if you've watched the other podcasts that I was in, I mentioned how we're both better at writing some parts of it, so we use that uh, when we do our, our writing. And uh, so, for instance, I'll write, like, the action-y scenes, the battle-y scenes, and things like that. A lot of times when she's writing, she has some of those parts. She'll just put, you know, insert epic battle here. And uh, she writes more of the uh, character development, romance, stuff like that. But anyway, she was writing a fantasy book at the time. We had planned to start, you know, querying it and stuff like that. And then we read that, and I was like, you know what? We should just put it up on Amazon and see what happens. Uh, we need to finish it really quickly. So... We ended up doing that, and it didn't do very well. Uh, like I said, we really did put it up quickly. We didn't even have it 
very well edit or things like that. Uh, I guess we had, we are kind of blinded, like, oh, she put it up, people were saying how it's not really that good and has all these grammar mistakes, so we can just throw something up, too. So that didn't work out too well. Um, but then after that, we uh, switched genres a bit and uh, wrote on and off uh, alongside the day job and put out things here and there. The first book came out in 2012. I'm trying to remember actual date, but uh, late 2012. And um, you know, we put out a book maybe every four or five months at that time, and it, it did okay. Started getting you know a couple hundred dollars a month or so. And uh, then at the beginning of this year, well, late last year, we decided to treat it more like a business rather than just a hobby that gets some money and see if we could really uh, do it because we, we both really like storytelling in general. So we made a schedule. We put down uh, how much you know we need to write a day to hit the goal. I was still doing the day job at that time. She was she turned over to full time writing, and um, we got a good process going and started putting out a book about every 45 days. And uh, this September, we had got to the point where uh, we felt comfortable enough for me to also quit my corporate job and we both just do nothing now but uh, write books and publish books. So um, thanks to self-publishing, you know, we're both doing things that we love. Uh, we get to work together, write together, and, um, you know, it's supporting a, a household of three right now, which is awesome. So, Nice. Congratulations on that. Um, you said September. Was that, like, right as KU Apocalypse is, is coming along? <laughs> How have things yeah. been since then? Yeah. Since then? Yeah, if I would have known about that, I may have not quit right away. Um, we're still making, you know, a good living for the our, our family, um, two of us and our daughter. Uh, but we were making quite a bit more. The like the week before Kid Unlimited came out, our sales dropped probably by about ten or fifteen percent, which I didn't think anything of at the time because you know they fluctuate a lot. Um, and just a week is like nothing on a data scale. So I was like, oh, that, that's fine. It's just you know end of summer still kind of slumping a little bit. We haven't had a new release in a while. And then Kindle Unlimited came out, and the day it came out, um, our sales dropped in that day, that specific day, by like 70%. Um, and then it recovered some, but I, I would say still since then, uh, we're probably down like 40% from where we were week to week or month to month. So it took a big chunk out of it that we're trying to get, get back, <laughs> but uh, it, it seems like it's on the way up, and you know we've seen a lot of authors pulling out can run limited, which we're not in. Um, so who knows? Who knows how it's going to go? Right, I'm not in it with any of my regular stuff. Uh, one of the reasons the pen name was fun because nobody was waiting for those, so I decided to try it. And it's definitely an advantage. Uh, maybe something we can talk about in a future show. But yeah, I've also seen. I feel fortunate now that I've been so prolific that I have so many books out that it's sort of not really a big deal if a book only sells 100 copies a month because I, you know, it's, it's a bunch of books are doing that. It's great, but yeah, I've seen a downturn too, and it, it's funny because it actually, to me, it kind of inspires you to get creative again with the marketing and maybe work a little hard or that sort of thing, so who knows? Maybe it'll be a bit of a blessing. Yeah, to be honest, at that point, we had, even though we had, we'd only doing it about nine months, we were like, oh, you know, we can relax a little bit. We don't have to do this, you know, seven days a week full-time to get these out to reach that income level. Um, we were getting pretty comfortable at what we were. We're like, okay, we can cut back a little bit. We can still put a book out every two months and have a lot more, you know, free time, things like that. Go slower with it. And then that happened. We we're like, okay, time to buckle down. Maybe you need to do like double time or something. But one thing that I noticed is that um, can unlimited hit our perma free the hardest. And of course, that's our sell through to the series. Um, so it, it hit that really hard and almost immediately cut our we were getting, before that, about five to 600 free downloads a day. Like, the book hovered in the top 500 or so of the free store uh, for months, and then that hit, and we went down to, like, sub-100 downloads a day without promotion. So um, that, that seems... I know everyone's strategy was get a perma-free, even with your book, which seems to be working with that, though. Um, I keep almost dipping into what we're going to talk about next week. but um, So that, that's... And our, ours, all of our books follow the same series at the moment, all the ones that sell anyway. Uh, so cutting the perma-free, the starter to both of those series um, down so far was a, a huge hit. So 
Um, your first book in your main series is Permafree 2, right? Yeah, I was just going to jump in about that. And, you know, it's been a long time since that's really done well on its own without promotion. So it's one of the things I'll be thinking about in the future is, like, do I really want to do a Permafree book one anymore or just kind of have it maybe 99 cents and then play around with dropping it to free for a couple weeks here and there? Because uh, as you've probably seen, uh, one of the things that happens when you drop something to free that wasn't was that it often gets picked up by Pixel of Ink or and a lot of the sites. Uh, that just happened on my Steampunk series. I made the first one free um, because I got invited to be part of an Apple promotion that was doing a free. I think we can talk about that now. <laughs> it was supposed to be secret, but I think it started a couple days ago, so we're cool. Not the name I was watching this, but... <laughs> but so I was like, well, that's the only thing I have that hasn't been free yet that I could do. And, and so that one is, you know, it's like when you first drop something, it gets a lot of, a lot of people go and download it. But seriously, for it's December 19th, I have only 651 free downloads of The Emperor's Edge so far for this month. I don't even know what it is. It's probably like 7,000 <laughs> in the free store. Um, I don't, I've been seeing that for a while, though, so I don't know if KU... I think it probably did hurt it some, too, because a lot of the people that previously were browsing the free charts are probably now the KU customers, and they can essentially get, you know the same as getting it for free. They pay their $10 a month and they have access to a lot more. So yeah, that's something I'll be thinking about in the future is if, uh, if I want to keep doing a book one free or more likely I'll probably cycle in and out of that and you know go from $3.99 to free or $3.99 to $0.99 cents, trying to play around with the promotions. Because uh, I totally agree with you. When I've had more downloads, there's a lot more people that will go on and, and buy the rest of the, the series after that. Yeah, sure. And that, I agree, too, that um, that's probably what it is. A lot of the people that went and hoarded all the free books and read them are probably, you know, getting their free books from the top 100 paid list now because the KU ones share the spot, even though they're kind of free in a way. Um, so I, that definitely cut our free down. I just looked as well, and we're, like, almost probably like 2,500 in the free store, whereas before KU were hovering around four or 500. So, I mean, a very big difference in... I should probably do some more promos on it, to be honest. Like you said, that's the only thing that seems to boost it now. Um, so you know, it doesn't seem like the golden ticket like it used to be, for sure. Yeah, it did definitely help me launch my pen name thing, but um, you know, I got like 10,000 or 15,000 downloads in the first month with that without being on BookBub or anything, any of the really big sites, because uh, it's kind of a cross-genre thing, so I, I didn't really think it fit in any of the categories. and. Um, that, but just by being new and free, I think it can be really, uh, people are always looking in that list and scanning things. And it's still doing, it's got like 3,000 right now for the month. Uh, this is its third month out. So it's still getting some downloads, but I am thinking, I'm like, maybe I'll make it 399 and just see how uh, the second books go. Because they're not really, it's a really open-ended series with different characters in each one. So I, you know, it, it helped, but we'll see. Uh, I might make it 399 just to see. Because right now the second and third books are, are still selling pretty well, and they can all stand alone. And so I'll be playing with it. It's nice to be able to have a, a side project where you're not like <laughs> depending on those sales to pay the bills. So yeah, that's what I was gonna say too. I'd be interested to try different prices. I've I've wanted to on some, but uh, our like all of our income, like 95% of our book income comes from one series, and that's the one I'd like to test prices on. But doing that, you know, if I if I, it doesn't go well, then we're, we're pretty screwed on income. So I, it's one of those scary things. So having the pin name is like a nice little bubble you have over on the side to play with, I think. so. Yeah, I used to say like, oh, no, there's no reason to do a pen name now in this world where everything's online because it's not like, you know, you're going to screw up your, sh your shelf or your listings on the shelves where people, uh, I don't know, you'll be in the wrong category at the bookstore and people won't find you or something. But... I, don't, I now think there are some reasons where a pen name can make sense, and you know, even if you just want to try something out without anybody knowing or jump in a different direction, you know, it, it's kind of it's kind of fun. Yeah, for sure. Um, all right, we'll get back to us in a second and talk about some more stuff. I figure pretty far into the show, so I should probably tell you guys what the show is going to be coming up. Uh, so it's not going to be this every time. I'm sure we're going to have episodes where Lindsay and I talk about stuff like this and what we're doing, especially when we have something interesting or something relevant going on with our own books. Um, so usually, though, what we're going to do is it's going to be very similar uh, to the old podcast, if you guys watched, uh, which may continue 
a new host at some point. I'm not sure, but um, self-publishing roundtable. It's going to be kind of similar to that. Um, we're going to do a lot of author interviews. The main similarity to it, though, is going to be what we did with the newest format of the roundtable. It's going to be having hot topic discussion. Uh, probably won't have them every other week. We'll post them on the site ahead of time when we're going to. Uh, but those are really fun, I think, listening back to them. Uh, as a host, a lot of times I was looking for questions and things like that. So when I listened back to them, you know, I, I learned the most out of those shows, really, when you get two or three uh, really successful people in a room, so to speak, talking about something, you can learn a lot, I think. So that's, uh, that's going to be one of the big ones that we try to do. Aside from that, definitely author interviews, um, you know, many genres about different things. And one reason I didn't put self-publishing in the URL title, things like that, is we're also going to try to grab, when we can, uh, some traditionally published authors also talk to them about, um, you know, their, their path as well and what they do for promotion and things because it's kind of split. Um, if you look on forums and things, people say, when they're talking about um, the big publishers, that a reason to go with them is because they can push books. Um, but from my experience and what I've seen and what i read elsewhere, uh, they only push the names that are already big. So it would be really interesting to talk to some of those people and uh, see what's going on in the uh, traditionally published front. So um, I think that's all we have planned as far as the series podcast going forward. You know, it could change. Um, we, we don't really plan on doing news type stuff, so mainly just the interviews and the roundtables. Uh, we're going to be posting some blog posts also. Lindsay has her own blog uh, site that she currently writes about self-publishing, so what I'm going to do is instead of asking her to do double work, put them on our site as well, I'll just link those as blog posts. So uh, if you come by our site, writingpodcast.com, uh, you can see the blog post that I put on there or links to uh, Lindsay's stuff. So definitely want to keep reading those. So um, Lindsay, was there anything that I missed that we talked about? going forward. Uh, I think it sounds good and uh, now I feel like pressure because I haven't put anything up on the site for like three weeks so <laughs> I'll have to write something something scintillating for people. But, uh, no, that's, no, that's I, it. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's all we talked about doing for the show is the interviews, roundtables, and then when we had you know, interesting stuff to say which isn't going to be every week I'm sure. Like I said, we're going to interview people much more interesting than us. So. Um, but no, the um, I will post it next week with a show that we're going to talk about uh, your pen name and things like that. I'll post a link to your blog about that because I, I thought it was really interesting. I mean, you know, even though I don't really have time to do it right now, it made me think, hmm, maybe I should go start a pen name right now. I, I guess be cautious reading it if you don't have time to start a pen name. So, um, all right, so I think the last thing that we talked about that we wanted to discuss on this show is a little about box sets because we're both in one right now. And um, the one that you're in and mine is pretty different. So do you want to talk about what kind of box set you're in and, uh, you know, pricing and things like that? Sure. Uh, we just I, I probably signed up for this back in, like, August or September, and we just launched, uh, we called it Epic, 14 Books of Fantasy, uh, launched about a week and a half ago. This is the first one I'd say I've been in. I've been in a couple now, but this has got a lot of uh, big names in the epic fantasy uh, genre, indies. Uh, you guys probably know Ed Robertson. He's been on quite a few podcasts. Um, who else is in here? Daniel Aronson. He's a big seller. I think he just hit 500,000 sales to date for his... Uh, he's got three or four series of epic fantasy with dragons and stuff. And uh, C. Greenwood's pretty big seller. Joseph Lalo, he's actually with me on uh, my little science fiction and fantasy marketing podcast that we started. So it, it's been fun. And it's, uh, you know, with epic fantasy, you don't really ever think you're going to really do with that great because it's, it's definitely a niche market. You know, not just the random person doesn't pick up ep epic fantasy just because it looks interesting. But like right now, we're 66 in the Kindle store overall. Um, it's 14 novels, and we did novels that we've already written. Um, I'm really excited this spring I'm going to be in a set where we're writing new stuff, and that'll actually be my pen names in there, so we'll, we'll see how much that helps the pen name. But uh, it'll be, uh, so this is all not used stuff, but, you know, novels we've written, so I look forward to a new one because it's kind of, it's tough to sell these things to your readers sometimes because they've already read your contribution for it. 
but even so, uh, we made it 99 cents, so it's a super good deal. And um, I, I know I, from my affiliate, affiliate links, which I use when I send out newsletters, that I sold at least a couple hundred copies, and I'm sure those other guys sold a lot too. Uh, you know, I, I don't do, a, I feel like a slacker on these things, because really all I do is I email my list and post on Facebook and Twitter. Uh, some other people are really, you know, they were really uh, trying to get on the New York Times best seller list, uh, which we did not make. I don't know how crazy many books you have to sell, but we sold like something like 10,000 the first week, and we even had 500 or 700 or something at Barnes and Noble. Uh, I've heard on those lists that you have to get sales not just at Amazon but at other stores too. So we didn't make it, but we sold. That's a lot of books, and it's early for me now to see what the sell-through rate is going to be. I'm not sure. I think I've sold a few extra copies of my uh, the follow-up. Uh, the novel I have in there is encrypted. It's I wrote it as a standalone. It's in my Emperor's Edge world, but it's not. Uh, it's a standalone. It's different characters, and there's one sequel to that. That so I, and that's the one I'm watching to see if it gets more sales than it usually does. But because there are like 14 books in the set, and I think I'm around 10 or 11th in there, I, I'm not sure. I'll be watching in uh, the months ahead to see if that book gets more sales because it's it's not usually a super big seller, so I, I should be able to tell. If it's getting some help from being in that bundle, um, I would definitely hope so. You know, with thousands of copies I'm sold, I'm hoping those people will, <laughs> some of them at least, will make it to the back of the bundle and check it out. Uh, and that one's 99 cents still, right? Yeah, it's 99 cents, and I think we're only doing it for two months rather than leaving it up there indefinitely. Uh, that's the plan right now, um, which I kind of like because I'm in another one that I did, we put out in August, which is a more urban fantasy contemporary stuff and it sold really we did really well with that one too um, yeah it's still out there still 99 cents but one of the things is because I have a 99 cent book in there I can't really ever go try to promote that book by itself on bookbub because it's a better deal somewhere else so I'm kind of thinking well you know fortunately that's kind of one of my secondary series I'm not really that focused on it so I don't it, not worrying too much about it but that's something to think about it when you make these things or sign up for these things how long you want to uh, how, how long you want to have a book in the set and uh, sometimes people do limited times but some of them if they're selling pretty decently people want to just leave them on there for months and months so right um, so yeah, before I talk about mine some more I had some more questions about the one that you're in because it's uh, your pricing everything and that one is different so um, I mean when you join box sets is your goal mainly for sell through or finding new readers or to try to hit a list, or I mean, what's what's your goal when you're looking for those big box sets? When I join them, I'm just yeah, hoping to find more readers. Really, uh, I actually have made a probably like 1,500 or so, 2,000 on the list we on the, from the first box set, the urban fantasy one uh, that we put put out in August, and I wasn't expecting to make any money on that. Uh, you know, like the first thousand or so went to pay for the cover art, and and we really pushed that one and did a lot of promotions. And I think this is the same thing. I'm I'm just not really worrying about the money, um, but you know, if you even at 99 cents, if you sell 10,000 copies, there is enough. There's a little to be made for everyone in the set. But yeah, I'm just I'm always hoping more people will find me and go on to check out the other books. I I'm probably a minority in uh, the box set world. I could I could not care less about the New York Times thing. Uh, it seems like a weird way to make the list, but like. Ten other authors. I mean, are, did you really make it? <laughs> I don't know. I know a lot of people. They really care about that, though, and uh, they want to be able to say that they're New York Times best-selling author. And I know that's my my whole thing is I want to, you know, as long as I can make enough money to make a living and and take some trips when I want to, I, I'm really cool. I'd r much rather have that than uh, <laughs> any sort of accolades out there in the publishing industry. Yeah, I agree. I was thinking about the 99 cent thing too, and with 14 authors, I mean, you're getting like, I don't know what, if uh, if everything gets paid for, you're probably getting like two cents a sell or something like that, so um, I definitely don't see joining them for the money as the main thing for sure. Find readers sounds the best, so. Um, I was just bringing mine up as well. Um, oh, and one other question for, for yours, since um, the, one, the one that I'm in, well, my wife is in under her her pen name. Um, I I created that one. So did you host either of these two? Did you create them, or were you just um, a member of them? 
No, I'm a total slacker. I just uh, I wait for somebody to invite me and then uh, then I join. And uh, I definitely try to pull my weight once I'm on the list and uh, promote it to my. You know, I've got about 4,000 people on my my author mailing list. So even though that's small compared to like some of the romance authors we've talked to on the other shows, I think that's pretty good for fantasy. And you know, with a 99 cent title, a lot more people would just randomly pick it up if you mail them, even if they're like wouldn't necessarily or they've already read your book, for example. So I think that uh, the way to get invited to these is generally part of it is just being out there and uh, kind of participating in the uh, in the indie author world, especially in your genre. Um, another list, like I said, my pen name got invited to a list, even though she has like a hundred people. It's weird talking about myself in third person. She got like a hundred and seven newsletter subscribers, but that's just because I post on the Romance Divas forum sometimes and. And there'll be people that go on there and say, hey, I'm putting together a list of this particular theme. Somebody was just looking, or a box set for this theme. Somebody was just looking to do one on dragons, for example, and I almost jumped on that too, but uh, I have enough on my plate for <laughs> this coming year. So be out there in the community. Um, you know, I, I blog about self-publishing, so I think people are aware of me somewhat, at least the people that read blogs. Um, you know, some people are really active on K-boards. That might be another place. Though I don't see as many recruiting style threads on there like, hey, I'm putting together a, um, a box set. I, I think most people want to be kind of selective and try to get some bigger name authors in there. But I don't know, the romance people are a little different. They, I'm sure they try to get the bigger name authors too, but uh, I don't know, they, they seem to be just really into helping each other out and I don't know, even you know, my stuff's science fiction romance, so it's so different than contemporary stuff. It's more like Firefly than a, I don't know, Gone with the Wind. Well, not that Gone with the Wind is contemporary, but you know what I mean. But still, they, they welcome you into the fold. They're really a, a warm community, and I think you can get some opportunities to join box sets through forums like that. But I, I don't know. Maybe there's horror forums and uh, the genres I'm not really that, that I don't follow. I definitely check and see if there's something like that out there and just kind of let it be known. And, you know, I tell people who complain on my site that, oh, you have to be someone in order to get invited to a box set. You know, if, if you don't get invited, then start one. <laughs> That's a lot of these people, a lot of these get started by people who aren't big sellers, and, and then they are able to snag a couple of bigger sellers on there just by, because they are offering to do the accounting and kind of the, the hard work, which I, I particularly don't want to have anything to do with that. Uh, taking in the money and sending it out to other people. So uh, I'd ask you about that, but I think yours is free. So, but uh, yeah, tell us, tell us some more about your set, I guess. All right. Yeah. And that, um, so you kind of answered what my last question was anyway, it was, I see all the time on the camera boards, especially I saw a few posts not long ago uh, where, you know, how do you get in these box sets? I see these box sets everywhere, but you know, where, how are they finding people or how you get in them? So uh, running those um, communities centered around as, a single type of book or a single genre sounds like the best. I've heard the Romance Divas site a lot. I'm not a member there. I don't have anything to do with it, but <laughs> uh, I don't write any romance stuff currently. Who knows? But um, So, yeah, finding those those communities. And speaking of the romance authors kind of being more open to pulling just about anyone in and trying new things, um, I don't know about you, but it seemed like ever since self-publishing took off, it always seems like the romance authors are like at the forefront of trying the new stuff, and uh, they're the ones making the big money too. So definitely follow them. I think <laughs> they are. There's some great business women there, and I'm sure there's some businessmen in there too. But I, I've actually picked up some tips just from uh, kind of browsing the posts there. You know, there's one I want to try pretty soon. But you know how they say uh, always put in in your afterward. Like if you have the next book in the series ready or it's available for pre-order, that you should put the link into that. And I've started doing that on Amazon. I'm a little lazy with the EPUBs because I don't want to make a separate one for every store. But um, somebody was saying that what they do is they actually put the picture of the title, the book, in there as a clickable link and make a nice little uh, kind of square so it almost looks like a little advertisement for the next book. And uh, I don't know, I was just thinking, yeah, because I know from my web background that people will click on pictures you know, and, and love to click on pictures. They're like, click, click, click. <laughs> so I always make pictures li into links on my own site when I put a book cover. It drives me crazy when people put a, their book cover on there and then it's nothing. You can't click a link to go to Amazon or to read a preview or anything. So that's just one little tip that's uh, totally off topic. But 
Yeah. Yeah, I, saw, I saw someone doing that and looked really professional. I was like, oh, I have to figure out how to format to do that. Yeah, that, that sounds interesting, I guess. And, uh, I mean, as long as your cover looks okay at grayscale, too, because the people you're using, I think that paper white and stuff is grayscale covers, right? Or does it use, do you know, the new paper white Kindles? I know. I've got an old used... Kindle. <laughs> it's definitely grayscale. I use my iPad now, but uh, I'm sure there are still some. Uh... But, yeah, I, I've seen that. Back in the day, paperbacks used to do that. They'd have some ads in the back, and they were just black and white paper. So unless it's a really dark cover or something that wouldn't show up, I think it would be okay. Yeah, we have to test that too. If you do, we can we can let everyone know how how it goes with ours. But uh, it sounds like I need to sign up there just to lurk around. So because uh, a lot of the stuff is probably not romance specific, it sounds like. So. Yeah, there's a lot of romance. Uh, stuff and just uh, chatty, chatty kind of threads with, that a lot of people, but I'm not into just uh, chatting on forums, that's kind of a time sink I think, but they have a self-publishing forum and a marketing and promotion forum and and uh, they're not just self-published authors so that's, it's kind of interesting, there's a mix of hybrid and traditional too. Okay, cool. Yeah, I, I've been hearing the name brought up quite a bit, but I didn't know much about it, so it sounds like I should sign up to lurk around anyway. Maybe. I'll just be a creep on the site and not ever post, just look around. So, um, All right, so as far as uh, you're asking about the box set that I'm in, I just, I'm just looking at it on the other screen. Um, so I don't know, maybe about six to nine months ago, I think that sounds about right on how um, there for a while box sets were like the new thing, like everyone was doing it, they were hitting high lists, and everyone, everyone thought it was one of those golden ticket things where you can get your name up there a lot and lots of sell-through and stuff. And um, I was thinking to myself, well, if everyone's doing this, it's probably not going to be this golden ticket for long, just like everything. And uh, I wondered kind of how we could uh, take advantage of it a little bit. And I had the idea to make a box set that was primary. Uh, so it looks like a really good deal. And hopefully the sell-through, you know, same philosophy as a primary for first in series, um, just a group of them. And um, over, like, months, I just procrastinated doing it, basically. I was like, uh, I don't know if it's worth the effort or worth the time to do. Uh, and then about two months ago or so, I decided to just uh, post on Kindle boards and some other places and see who would be interested in doing it. And, um, you know, as part of, I didn't mention earlier, but uh, one side of self-publishing that we make money on as well is I have a, um, a business where we do things like formatting and things like that. Uh, formatting and beta reads. So I knew how to format books. I never formatted one that was like 1.6 million words, which ended up taking longer than I expected. But anyway, um, we got these 14 authors, and uh, all of their books were already, their first in the series, already free, or they wanted it to be free. And some of them did it in the hopes that Amazon would price match their first book to the bundle. Um, so we got those, and we kind of drew names to see the order of who would be in the set, and uh, it's all urban fantasy, paranormal stuff, um, young adult friendly, and we put those together and put it out. Um, let me see. I'm trying to pull up when it went free. Super prepared for this. October 12th. Oh, that's not when it's free. That's your publication date. Yeah. It's loading. KDP is slow. Um, we, what I did, though, is I started out and I put it straight on... Uh, I had heard that Amazon price matches uh, Google Play the fastest, and they let you put free right off the bat on there. So I um, put it on Google Play, made it free, and as soon as it was live and free on there, I emailed KDP and told them, and they price matched, and they price matched in all the... Uh, foreign stores shortly after. So it looks like in the U.S. store it went free on October 16th. And on average in the U.S. store it's been doing um, about 25 to 30,000 free downloads in a, a month period. Um, it's doing really well in all the foreign stores as well. And it just went live um, about a week ago on all the other vendors like Apple and everywhere like that. I had... Um, I was really busy at the time, so one of the authors um, stepped up on the set and, and said that they could take over that portion and put it on the other vendors, so she did that. Uh, Christine Pope, uh, she's actually the first novel in the set, and um, she's getting like extreme uh, sell-through rates, so 
where you are in the box set definitely matters. Um, but I didn't want to be like a jerk and say, hey, I'm, I'm formatting this. We're going in the front. So we did draw names. Um, we're actually second in it, though, and we've seen some pretty good sell-through rate. Uh, I think it's definitely been worthwhile. It was a lot of time doing it just to put it out for free. But like you were saying, if you have 14 authors and it was 99 cents, even if you get a ton of sales, you're, you're only getting like one or two cents per, per sale. So we figured just try this free. Um, and with the force of 14 people promoting it on their pages, mailing lists, and also we've had several uh, put it up on places like EM Team, things like that. It's been in the top 100 free stores since it came out, and predominantly during that time in the top 50. So we've gotten tons and tons um, of downloads, and we're we're finally starting to see sell through in hours after about uh, I don't know, maybe like three weeks in or so. Um, but I know Christine, right off the bat, um, our also bought some that set almost immediately went to her books since hers was the first in the series. So they're all being they're getting to the end of her book immediately clicking to find the second one, which is good. So Obviously you should have put somebody that was not very good author as number one. <laughs> so they'd skip right to yours. Yeah, right. And uh, or they would read it and say, you know, delete, this sucks, go leave one star. <laughs> Um, speaking of one stars, I didn't really realize this, but speaking of Google Play and one stars, I um, we've had a book perma free on there for a long time, but I haven't just really looked at the reviews. And uh, one of the authors a couple weeks ago told me um, that there was a review on there saying that it wasn't free in like the UK, so that I went to see if that was true, and I fixed that. And then I noticed that it has tons of one star reviews. Like the average is still over four, or somewhere around there has tons of one-star reviews, and all of them are like, even though it says it's free, Google wants my credit card information. This is a scam. These authors are scamming you. One star. And uh, so it's really bad on Google Play. So I would say, and I'm, I'm thinking about going back and redoing it, if you ever put a book free on Google Play, you may want to put in the description that although it's free, Google's going to ask for your credit information because we have so many one-stars in our free books there because of that. Wow, see, I didn't even, I don't, haven't done anything with Google Play yet, so that's a good tip. I uh, <laughs> had no idea. Um, no, it's it great. So I bad. see that, uh, yeah, I see Christine's like 2,000 sales ranking on her book, too, and uh, that's without even being in KU, so that's pretty good for sure. Uh, did you feel, because I've actually been approached by people who wanted to, were wondering, should we do 99 cents or should we do free? And I always thought, well, all of our books are perma-free anyway, so what's going to be the appeal for people if they were interested? They could just go check them out. But uh, just based on what your free ranking is, it seems like for some reason, even if these books are all individually free, people are thinking, wow, this is awesome. i got to grab this bundle to um, be, yeah. So a couple things of that. One thing that I made sure is that I put, well, for two reasons. When we first put the bundle on Amazon before it was price matched, I put it as a sell price as $9.99 and then put in the description, you know, don't buy this. It's going to be it's going to be free. Uh, so that did two things. You know, it stopped people from accidentally buying it and beforehand about the finances on it, which is you said you wouldn't want to do either. And so <laughs> I, uh, I kind of bypassed that, cheated that way as part of it. But also now if you look, um, it looks like these 14 books are usually um, – 9.99. So people think they're getting a really good deal, and we've actually had reviews, especially on Google Play, um, where they're like, "When I saw this used to be 9.99, I had to grab it before it wasn't free anymore." So it's a big appeal, just um, because it, it's so they don't know that all the books are normally free. The random person coming across them, and uh, the ones that have already, like for instance, uh, Christine's first book, I believe, was perma free anyway. Um, People that are her fans that have already read that, their incentive isn't to re-download it. I mean, they can to support her, obviously, um, or support the set, but it's kind of, um, it's, it's just one big cross-promotion, like cross-pollinating lists. And uh, one thing that I always thought was weird um, is hearing people saying the authors are competing with each other, really. Um, but people can read books way faster than we can write them, for sure. So working together and kind of sharing other books that you think are good or in your genre, um, you know, making those connections and relationships with other authors to share their stuff works out really well. And this set is just, you know, one big example of that. So 14 authors um, giving out their their book, which may already be free, but their fans may not know about the other ones. So we've also had reviews where people were like, oh, I've already, I had already read two or three in this set. 
I still grabbed it because, you know, I like those, so the ones they're working with is, are probably good also. So um, that that's kind of what the plan was, was just to, to share um, our readers in a way that worked out better than just emailing each other's lists or whatever, so. Now I'm interested. If anybody out there wants to Epic Fantasy Free Bundle, I'm available. <laughs> no, but that, that's really cool. I wouldn't have guessed that... Uh, well, I guess if you've done a couple ads too, but uh, yeah, that's it's good. I wouldn't have thought that free, doing a free bundle would really be that much of a winner, but it sounds like it's definitely doing well for you guys. Yeah, and we didn't have any ads the first few days because you know it wasn't even free yet, and no uh, reviews or anything like that. I mean, just looking at the chart, um, our very first day on there, we had three thousand three hundred downloads. Um, I mean, in the first three days, we had right at 10,000, and that's before any ads. So um, one thing, I, like I said, I think is when they saw it was 10 bucks and it, and it was marked as free, maybe some people just thought, you know, holy cow, this is, this is a mistake. I'm going to download it before it goes to paid. Um, but another thing, talking about keywords and things like that, I did put in the title of the book, which you're not supposed to do unless it's actually the title, but uh, we put it on the cover, so fair game, I think, is um, that they're, they are free. So... Uh, people searching for free paranormal books or things like that, um, free urban fantasy, because those are in the title, this book comes up um, really high on those lists also. So I think we're getting a lot of people just downloading it through Amazon search traffic too. So. Yeah, you've definitely got the keywords going there. Here, I'm going to read this for uh, <laughs> for the viewers. The Paranormal 13, 13 free books featuring witches, vampires, werewolves, mermaids, psychics, Loki, time travel, and more. Box set including a 14th free novel. That's the title. <laughs> but hey, whatever works. I, I hear you. The works yeah. for me. They let you. And, yeah, it's all on the cover. So um, I, I would, to play it safe, uh, I know other people, I wouldn't do things like flood your title with keywords on a normal like standalone book unless it's also on the cover but if it's part of the title and we made sure that like on the cover itself if you were to make it larger you could see that it says that on there so according to the KDP rules, Amazon rules, it's fair game uh, I've seen people, you don't want to do this where it's like um, they have a horror book and in quotations or whatever or parentheses to the side it'll say something like, like Stephen King's books or something <laughs> so that, that'll get you taken down pretty fast but yeah, I suppose one more perk with the bundles, too, is that uh, each book will kind of have a different subject, even if they're all, like, paranormal and urban fantasy, right? You've got all the different categories you can try to get in on Amazon, like you guys are in ghosts, psychics, vampires, witches and wizards, uh, you know, paranormal and urban. So it's it's that much more visibility. So it's probably like this self-perpetuating thing now that you're up there in the top uh, 50 or 60 free that anybody looking in any of those subjects is going to see your big box set. And, and that's true for the paid box sets, too. So, Yeah, for sure. And um, it's worked out really well. I mean, it was just an experiment. I, I don't know that we were the first ones to do it. Probably not. Um, but I hadn't seen anything like it, so I figured I would try it. And, you know, if, if it didn't work out, it was just some wasted time, I guess, um, experimenting. But it's worked out pretty well. And, you know, I can't speak for what um, other promotions, like Christina's done on her book. I keep mentioning her because hers is the first one in the set and is getting the most sell-through so far. Um, but I, I did ask her on the Facebook group for it, you know, how her sell-through was going, and she said it was going really, really well. And uh, as far as I, I can remember, her book was ranked quite a bit um, lower in the store, meaning, well, higher rank number. Um, until the box set came out. So, but again, I don't want to comment on it too much because I, I don't know specifically what else she's done. She could add other things on the side, but um, South there is going really well on it so far. And uh, I know some of the people like in the middle of the book are saying they're finally starting to get sell through. So if you're in a really big um, author box set and you're like towards the end, you could probably expect not to get much sell through for a long time until people get to that you know millionth word or so. so. Yeah, you got to pay the formatter to get listed at the beginning, right? See, I, I was the formatter. I should have. <laughs> oh, I should just. We should just make ours in the front. So, um, and you said, uh, what what was the date that yours came out? The most recent one? Oh, I just closed a bit. It was on Tuesday, a week and a half ago. So, whatever okay. that was, probably around. 
it doesn't say on the Amazon page, but we've got a review from December 10th, so I'm going to go with that. <laughs> and uh, so, yeah, people probably three or four author years probably aren't seeing that much sell through yet either, I would bet. So I'm not sure yeah. how deep in it you are. <laughs> I'm pretty far towards the back. Well, maybe not. I don't know. I'm at least past the middle of the pack. That's okay. Uh, it'll be like I said. I, it's not a big seller of a book. Those two books for me. So it will be kind of a. I'll I'll know if I get a big increase in sales that this is what I can credit it for. Um, you know, I think these are probably. It's going to be rare for these to like make a new author. Although I know that those romance guys that were on self-publishing roundtable, Seals of Summer or something, they seem to have a really big hit with theirs. And I think in that case, a lot of them were not big name authors to start with. So. It can definitely be the kind of thing that takes you from not selling very many books at all to suddenly you're on some people's radar and you're you know making more sales and actually making uh, more than latte money every month. So I definitely think it's worth trying to if if you can't get invited to one, start one and, and go out there and try to recruit some people and do it. And uh, yeah, I think Adam's way of making of doing it free means you don't have to worry about the accounting and. Uh, in, in most cases, in the ones I've been in, it's been somebody who's had their own LLC and been willing to kind of handle the money stuff under that. You know, I would personally not feel comfortable taking it into a personal account and uh, then divvying up the money. I mean, it just gets a little, mm. <laughs> I don't know. I'm sure people have done it, but no, I don't want to get, get sued. <laughs> Yeah, which is one reason, another one of the reasons why I made it free. I was thinking this is going to be a lot less to handle if this is all free. And the only first interval series lead off that we had at that time was one that was already permanently free. And I was thinking, you know, if we put that in a 99 cent bundle, people are going to be like, well, why don't we just go download it for free anyway? So um, it wouldn't have worked out all that well. Um, but. So speaking of, um, I've noticed a lot of box sets. I mean, they've been creeping up in other genres too, but par um, paranormal. There's quite a bit urban fantasy. I think uh, said your other set was urban fantasy, and um, I've seen quite a bit of uh, like post-elliptic lately, and tons of romance. Um, it seems like there are a lot of genres where there's still not any box sets or not many. So I'd especially say if you're in one of those um, small genres, you know, whether you're doing well or not, maybe see if you can find a group of other authors even one at a time that are in that same genre and maybe try out a box set because it, it may be an underserved um, market, you know, and if you can find one of those, it's, it's kind of like a gold mine sometimes or at least a reader mine where you can get a lot more readers, so um, it'd be interesting to see how the box sets do and, and other things like, you know, historical fiction or things like that. Yeah, and I will point out that you really do kind of need to put some effort into this. Probably make a face group group or something so that all the authors can be in touch with each other. Have a bit of a plan. Have you know, they're going out to this mailing list on this day, and you know, and we're going to buy these ads because the ones you know I've been into, like I say, that have done really well, and then I've been in another two that have just kind of we just slapped this together for a, <laughs> for some promotion or something, and uh, you know that. They still can do okay at 99 cents. It's still a good deal, and so maybe the rankings would be like three or four thousand in the Amazon store, which is not shabby. But you know, if you were talking about wanting to move thousands of copies a week, uh, you're probably gonna have to put some effort into it. Uh, maybe less for the free one, right? But uh, even at 99 cents, you gotta get the ball rolling right there that first week and really have people willing to, you know, send it out to their mailing list and maybe buy some ads and that kind of thing. Yeah, and um, definitely, like you said, planning even for the free one. We def we started the Facebook group uh, right off the bat. Um, just a couple more things that that, that reminded me of. Um, I would say whether it's free or not, um, especially it's weird that the other stores didn't do this, but especially Amazon. Right away, we got I got an email back that said um, we need the cop we need proof that you are able to um, you know permission from the authors to publish all these under your account, and if you don't provide this 48 hours, we're going to lock your account. And I was like, oh, crap. Um, so make sure if you're going into this, free or not, that you get that beforehand. So we had to kind of scramble at all that. Um, it was as easy as just having each of them email me with their um, their header being, um, or with information in it being emailed from their website or their header being from their website. Um, that's all it took, and I just forwarded those or compiled them and sent them to KDP, and then went through without any problem. None of the other sites 
needed that, which is maybe kind of scary. <laughs> um, but I'm not sure how KDP doesn't pick up all those like uh, books recently that are well. That, that's another topic. But if you've been looking at the forums and stuff, there's all these scams going through KU, you know, plagiarism and copyright infringement things. But anyway, uh, make sure you have that. The community thing through Facebook is what we use also is really good, and we uh, coordinate in there who's going to email off. And I've been really fortunate that a lot of the um, the members of the set have kind of taken that because uh, they knew uh, we were going through some, some some stuff in real life, so to say, and then also that uh, I'd done the formatting and things. I've had a lot of them pick up and uh, kind of lead, you know, let's do this on uh, X, Y, and Z day. And uh, to stagger them, I, I know that's kind of, um, a lot of people will just, like, have a promotional blast, like they'll put everything in one day. So I would say stagger them. That's one uh, key to staying up in the ranks because I think Amazon... Um, Books don't really have very much sticking power on there when they have blips on the radar, so make sure you, you spread them out a few days or a few weeks apart to try to make your graph more level. I think the more level your, your cells or free graph is on the on your dashboard, um, the more sticking power your rank has. They're, that's what I've found so far anyway. Yeah, I think that's definitely been a result of, or their answer to like the BookBub ad for a while there. You got a BookBub ad and you were in the top 100 or 200 there for weeks afterwards, and I think they've kind of made it now. So it it's more sustained sales over a few days are going to what be what's going to help you stick in the charts. Yep. So um, I think that's about all that I had for today about box sets and stuff. We're at the hour mark. I know we started a little late, but I'm good to wrap things up. If you are, did you have anything else about box sets or anything you want to talk about this week, Lindsay? I think I'm good. I would just say that if you are thinking of doing this, probably sooner better than later. You know, I think uh, we talked about it back on the self-publishing roundtable too, that now there are so many out there that it's probably a little less effective than it used to be. And uh, I'll see definitely when I look at the box sets, the also bots, like on the 99 cent one, is usually a whole bunch of other box sets rather than, I mean, maybe by page three you're getting into the author's second books and things like that. But So there's people that just go out there and buy the box sets without ever selling, buying more books in the series, and there's so many box sets now for them that they don't need to go on if, if they, uh, you know, if they don't want to. They've got 10 more books they can get for 99 cents, <laughs> so. Yeah, for sure, and uh, kind of on that, that same thing, um, you know, it's not one of those things that you can, maybe it used to be where you can throw up and just leave there, but if you're wanting to go into a box, either run one or be part of one. Um, I mean, it, there's going to be some work in it to stay up there. You definitely can't just throw it up there and, and hope it hope it sticks. Like I said, I've been really fortunate that a lot of the members in this one are doing a lot of promotional work, um, but it, it's definitely not one of those for you know post it and forget about things. So it, it requires promotion just like normal books. Uh, maybe even more so now with it getting so crowded. Like you said, I've noticed that too. A lot of the also bots. Even looking at ours, the second also bot is your new uh, box set. So. <laughs> Um, even even with a free, you have people um, getting those. So, um, all right, I think that's everything. I just looked on the comments. It's a little harder to keep track of the comments when you and I are just talking back and forth. So there are some on there. Uh, there's not really any serious questions or anything. But um, John asked earlier when I was talking about myself. Um, he wants to know if he can start a writing partnership where he just sends me things that say insert epic battle here, insert calm moment here, insert character development here so that I write the book for him. I'm not so sure about that. So. <laughs> and, I'll do uh, the dialogue. That's my favorite part is the dialogue. I always, Although I write the, the battle scenes pretty quickly because there isn't dialogue. I, I don't know. I've heard other people struggle with those, but I just burn through it. How many times can you say that you cut him with a sword and he jumped off a cliff? And <laughs> so I don't know. Dialogue takes more thought, I think, for me. Yeah, dialogue's fun, too. I, I like writing it. So, um, All right, I think that's it for our first episode. Hopefully it went well. I know we actually had six people watching live, which is awesome. It's more than I thought. But um, So anyone listening to this live or later on on YouTube and things, uh, the plan is to get this going on iTunes. Um, I'm wanting it on there uh, by the beginning of the new week. It may be a little slow because um, we have a new book coming out next week, supposedly on Christmas, uh, we haven't been doing the pre-order thing. We've been kind of going right up till release date, getting things ready. So it just came back from the first edits, and we're both going through it over the next few days. So 
going to be really busy trying to get that out in time for Christmas. Um, but after that, I'll have these up. And um, other than that, uh, we will be here. The plan is to be here again live on the 26th, the day after Christmas. Uh, there, are, We were planning on getting a guest for that day, but we know a lot of people are still spending time with family and, you know, winding down, things at that point, so uh, we decided against it. Um, next week we're going to be talking a bit about pin names, especially Lindsay's, who just revealed what genre her pin name is in during this show, so if you didn't catch that, you can go back and find her. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go look after the show, by the way. Um, and then on the second, we have our first interview scheduled uh, with Wayne Stinnett, uh, who's kind of been this year dominating the Sea Adventure category, so if you don't know who he is, um, you know, you can look him up before that show. So that's what we have planned so far. Uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed this and stick with us in the upcoming weeks. We plan on going long-term with this, um, and uh, hopefully everyone enjoys it. Um, sorry, I just saw a new comment, but it's not it's not anything. Um, did you have any closing stuff to say, Lindsay? Uh, no, just thanks to our six viewers. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, anybody else who checks us out in the future, I hope you found it somewhat informative. Yeah, for sure. And if uh, I did get an email about someone wanting to support the show already, which is awesome, I wasn't expecting that already. Um, our traffic on the website's been like 12 a day, so getting an email out of 12, um, 12 visits is, is pretty high percentage. So uh, if anyone else is wondering how to support the show right now, the best thing to do is just watch it and uh, you know share it with anyone that you think it could help them out, or they would also find it informative. So, um, But that's it for us for this week, and we'll see you one week from today on the 26th at the same time. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye.